Hey out there, this is March 25th, 2016, and it's uh, about quarter after 10 in the morning here in Northern California, Friday. And, uh, you know, in the first part of this tape, I was showing some of the sky where I live. And for the last three days, I'm including today, there's been extensive camp trailing going on and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the psychological impact and implications of what's going on here the idea that humanity at large are completely out of control they have no power they have no hand they have no say so in what's going on in this arena and in essence, we become like cockroaches. We're hapless at the mercy of our masters. And they can poison us or do what they want at will because there's utterly and absolutely no accountability, no oversight, no uh, liability, and uh, it's going on right under our noses. The mainstream media avoids the topic. They don't ask any questions. We all know it's happening. Uh, it's been exposed roundly uh, on the alternative media all over the internet. Everybody knows there's entire giant airplanes set up to spray concoctions on us. And uh, the mainstream media won't ask why. I mean, this has reached absurdist levels of uh, surreptitious domination over the public. And uh, it's not okay. I mean, for one thing, I'll tell you personally, I walk around in a state of outrage, indignation at this idea that there is, is no oversight, there is no accountability, there is no liability. There's nobody to take the blame, for example, if they, in their experimenting, they create some terrible storm or a drought or the health implications and effects of what's being sprayed in our atmosphere because it all of course falls down to the ground and we end up breathing it. So the psychological impact is enormous and this plays on us and 
it creates this uh, bad spirit. It's a rebellious spirit. It wants to lash out. It's just angry. It's uptight. It's edgy. It, it's anxious. And it wants to confront and do something to change the situation. So we're all walking around in this state, whether we know it or not. And this is a big part of why this thing we call happiness is so elusive in our culture. Because how can we be when we know we have no control? It's endemic and emblematic of the other facets of our society and the kind of people that are running our lives and creating the policies we have to live under. These people have no accountability. They have no conscience either, apparently, and this is a big problem for us. You take the banking industry. I mean, it is it is the root of all of our problems, this money printing. Uh, and um, so many of us can't see it because we're so weaned and indoctrinated. We are inculcated. We're brought up on this madness really because that's the people that are creating our reality which is really an unreality they're mad they're insane these are diabolical freaks I mean these are a gangster of thugs and criminals and just corrupt elitist hypocrites uh, that live by a double standard they believe they're better than everybody else and they're sick they're twisted there's not enough pejorative terms you can use to describe the people that are manipulating our reality, that are training us to think, to act, to feel a certain way, are monsters. I mean, in essence, these are maybe human beings on the surface. They look like it topically, but underneath is just guile and hatred and just murderous, uh, murderous lying, cheating, thieving, deceiving nature that just wants to destroy humanity. And some of these people aren't surreptitious. They come out and they speak openly about these things. I mean, look at the, uh, the Georgia Guidestones. Nobody's ashamed of these giant monumental stones with this new set of Ten Commandments uh, that basically says, look, we need to get rid of about seven billion people now because there's about seven and a half billion people on the earth and they want to maintain a population on the earth of 500 million. So these are the good guys. They're doing this in our face under the pretext that these are the altruistic ones, the benevolent ones. They, they want the greater good to save the planet, not humanity, but the greater good for them and their descendants. That's what they want, okay? But they want to get rid of the rest of humanity because they see us as a cancer, a blight, a plague, a scourge upon the earth, right? Because we have a CO2 footprint. And it's just reached absurdist levels here. We, we all know this is the whole context for why they need to impoverish the people because they knew eventually everybody would figure out that currency is not supposed to go down in value all the time, not supposed to go down in worth, purchasing power, whatever you want to call it, and that this is the root of our problems. If we had true capitalism, we wouldn't have these problems. Supply and demand based. Your currency would go up in worth. So, in other words, this would gradually solve all of our problems. All of them. All of them. This is what Jesus said. He said, this is the root of all the evil, not some of the evil. It's the money. The abortions, the prostitutions, the dubious warfare, the vast majority of the crime, all the debt, uh, so much of the misery, the suicide, so much of the... Uh, and as you notice, I filmed some of these locks on this fence I'm standing. A lot of people have killed themselves here. And, and probably more to come. They could probably just jump right off the cliff and die here. But things we don't even notice are going on around us. Just this this whole miasma, this uh, malaise that we're having to live under here. This divisive, you know, social Darwinian, dog eat dog, survival of the meanest, the most moneyed out there, uh, atmosphere that we have to live under. So we're talking dubious warfare. We're talking. Every single problem, every social ill that is solvable would be solved if our currency was sound. So any thinking person now can understand why this is the one commodity humanity is not tolerated to have. We cannot. It is completely prohibited, banned by our elitist overlords. Because what would happen is, in time, it would render them irrelevant. 
as society, as not just in America, all over the world, became wealthy and prosperous and free and safe and secure, these people would be rendered irrelevant. Okay, We wouldn't need them anymore. Therefore, they'd be out of a job. Nobody would listen to them anymore. Okay, But as long as they've got the power of the money printing, as long as they've got the power of the purse strings out there, they control everything. Because people will, and it's a matter of fact, do anything for money. Not everybody. A lot of people won't do a lot of things for money. But there is an element of people that are willing to do anything. They're willing to commit first-degree murder. Okay, We know that as a matter of fact for money. So there's no debating that issue. That is how our society is run okay by these people that are willing to do those things that are the most dastardly this is how they stay in control the assassination of JFK for example a beloved American president shot down because of the controversy of abolishing the Federal Reserve is what he fully intended to do you never hear anybody talk about this anymore executive order 11,110 he was getting rid of the Federal Reserve because he saw it as a private group that didn't have the best interest of the American people in heart so he was getting rid of them. He was already circulating a new currency called silver notes, silver certificates. Anybody that can, you know, uh, talk to somebody that's that was a child even in the '60s can remember these notes. I remember them. I was about four four years old. I remember seeing these notes being circulated. But shortly after his assassination, these disappear. You never hear it. They're just a, you know, uh, just a token of of his presidency and. Uh, something to, uh, you know, memorabilia perhaps. But, uh, you know, that's a state of affairs. So you understand why it, it is such an anathema, a bad thing for these rulers to ever be confronted at the root of the problem, right there at the money printing presses. Who has the control over this? Why do they have the control? What gives them this exclusive privilege that you and I don't have? But this was, is the root of, you know, ending the Kemp trailing because, again, here's people selling their content. My kids are down there, too, but, hey, you know what? I can't think about the psychological end. What are you talking about? Who looks up in the sky? But it's a matter of fact. It's science to state that there is a, a disorder called uh, 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 SAD, this seasonal affective disorder, and it directly relates to cloudy skies, gray skies, gloomy skies, and it causes this sort of depression, a deep and profound depression, because of this lack of light, which is a, it's a scientific fact that you need a certain amount of light, and nature pro 